The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too not familiar. It's a new craze, and the girls here want to just say, hey, I want to, to say, hey, I want to. Hello, everybody, and welcome to my brother, my brother, and me. It is I show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. I'm your middlest brother, Travis McElroy. I'm your baby's brother, Griffin McElroy. Was that too subtle? I tried a different thing. <laughs> no, what? I'm actually what worried that do? was too and blatant. And me. No, the problem weird. is you got to leave that. Uh, it's got to be even more subtle, Justin, because the mystery of who the me is is something that's permeated all of our back episodes. So if you emphasize it like that, it makes it sound like you're the me when really isn't everyone the me. Yeah, I like to think that the, 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 the listeners the me. If you, if at the end of the day, but that would cut one of us out of the show, Griffin. Mm-hmm. So what one you, of us is the interloper. I see. I'm the comma. What? What do you guys want to talk about? I want to talk about Terrace House and nothing. No. Nothing no, else. We've already talked about Terrace House. No, but see, I no, no, but no, but guys, I'm late to it. So now I need everybody to rewind that clock back mm. and let's talk about it with fresh new eyes because I no. just started watching it. <laughs> Acting. Start the play over. <laughs> this is a. This is the penalty you pay for not taking our recommendations at face value from like the jump trap. So this here's the, the thing. Here's the what price. I find interesting. No, about I don't Terrace think we're gonna. House. We actually can't talk about what's interesting about the Japanese reality television show netflix original terrace house we unfortunately can't oh one i ah, feel like i feel oh, like the commentators ah, no, are like a completely it. separate show that's running ah, concurrently sure. we I'm just sure this is all like witty and urbane mm. i do want to alert everybody though that jan one when we all pile into the plane with the terrace house fam and mm-hmm. head on down to the aloha state this yeah. show will become only about terrace house 24 mm-hmm. 7 uh, catch pretty up pretty much it like completely only about Terry Nails. By the way, the, I just want to put this plea out there again because uh, I saw I saw Griffin put the word out. Uh, if you can find some way to find some subtitled seasons of Terrace House before they the Netflix era, that would just be a, yeah, a, series just a one delight from series one on. Really, there's a lot of in jokes in Terrace House. Boys and girls in the city that I feel like I'm missing out on. So if yes. you could just do that for me. Thanks. And also, um, I want to say that I am completely, av- I'm 100, I will make myself available to be on a future season of Terrace oh, House. Oh, good. Yeah, now, that's what they need. Here's the thing, because I also am available to be on The Bachelorette. And I know what you're thinking, but Travis, you're married. Correct. I will not be there for any dating purposes whatsoever. I will only be an in the house color commentator. That's there, be- like, I don't know about all these guys. That's mm-hmm. all I want. You're they the interloper have, of the Bachelorette. Yeah, they should and have I, on one and in, in every season there should be one designated wingman. Right, and he's just in the house. Like, hey, that's all good. Have you checked Reggie? <laughs> yeah, Reggie's like, pretty cool. Am I right? Like, I've thought about doing that. I I would love to be the married just on the Bachelorette when like my title pops up. It just says Travis McElroy, married person, and like. It'll just be me hanging out with like Jojo or whatever, being like, I don't know about that guy, Jojo. And it'll just be like that over and over again. I want to do that on Terrace House too, where I'm not interested in dating anyone. I'm just there for the food and the buddy ship. That's all I want. But you're not Travis, my buddy. You're my friend. There mm-hmm. will be a there will be a language barrier that I imagine will be significant. But I think that will also add a certain flair to the show. Yeah, when I sit be- there and go, I think that what we have here is a problem with communication because I don't know what you're saying and you yeah. don't know what I'm saying. You're going, right. you're going to become, you're not going to be Travis the buddy. You're going to be Travis the screaming beard man. You're going uh-huh. to be like a, like a unintelligible <laughs> troll that just yeah. stalks the house and leaves dirty Ugh. dishes everywhere. Okay. That's what we'll do. I, when they, when everybody moves into the house, I'll just already be there. There will be no explanation and like, 
any kind of introduction will be made impossible. And I will just, like, I'll just be a mystery bearded person who just lives in the house. That's actually a great idea, Travis. I, I would love to see somebody pull this move. It would work on Terrace House or Real World. If you're the first person to show up at the house, when from the second person on, just start telling them it's your house. Yeah. Just say it's like a new thing they're doing where like, oh, welcome to my abode. This is my, mm. well, I'd rather, I'll just go ahead and pick what, where I'm going to sleep because I do own the home. It's my I've lived here for home. 10 years, so. Welcome to Travis's place. Place. It's the new name of the show. They changed it for Netflix. Or it's just it's a shame like, oh, what address were you looking for? Oh no, no, this is oh, no. this is six five two. But you can live here. <laughs> Do you want to stay? I I just went to the store and bought some stuff. Are I you made hungry? omelet rice. Um, I it's a shame we got off on this terrace house bit because again, gotcha. like, we just can't like we just can't get into it. Um, but also I wanted to talk about, I had an intro that I wanted to talk about, but we've gone a little bit long, so I don't know if this is the right time, but I wanted to talk um, at length about, um, piss. (laughs) Cause it's 1223 PM where I am right now. And just walking backwards, I believe 17 minutes ago, another person pissed on me and it wasn't the first time it's happened in the last 16 days. In fact, it's probably about the ninth time it's happened kind of that sun and mask action the three columns just, basically like mm-hmm. the comedy classic son of mask and that it's just you think they're so babies are so little that mm-hmm. their pee muscles are going to be weak but it just what? go it just go and go and go and go it just go he pissed and it crossed the length of his whole body and it didn't get on him at all because <laughs> the pressure of the piss was so powerful but it did but there was but there's Piss on the blinds. Piss I want to tell the you, chair. Piss t- to make you a superstar. Griffin, this t- <laughs> is the piss. Piss it up. Piss it up. Piss it up. Piss down. But Griffin, <laughs> that, <laughs> you're talking <laughs> about that common shit. Your your tiny baby son peed on you. My tiny baby daughter peed on me. I was changing her diaper mid change. She farted while she was peeing. The nice. pressure of the fart. Push made her pee onto me. She peed on me like my baby daughter. Like it's, it was it's amazing. Just, it's a non-star. babies are incredible. They're beautiful, beautiful. It's amazing. They, I, I don't want to. I don't want to talk about it every time my son pisses on me. But it's like it's it's notable to mention if if before I had a child, another person. Had peed just, on you, just pissed, you just pissed on me. I'd be like, "Hey guys, yeah. I have a crazy idea for this intro. This crazy story of this thing that happened to me that was completely. It was actually wet and wild. It's that, it, is, that is true. If they, like if this were real world, and I came on to this podcast one day to talk about how uh, like how in depth I was keeping track of someone else who lived in the house's bowel movements, mm. like it, you would th- you would be like, okay, Travis, well you're off the show. <laughs> oh, Trav, what a you're, funny intro for what a wild story." You're really interested in how often and the consistency of this other human being's poop. Well, yes, I am. Thank you for asking. Uh, listen, it's time to, that's enough bloviating about ourselves and our spawn. It's time to help real people. Here it go. Hi, brothers. I have a friend who is intelligent and well read, but for reasons unknown, she mispronounces the word pseudonym saying suedum. <laughs> Oh man! Instead of <laughs> instead of pseudonym, <laughs> I didn't correct her that first time she mispronounced, and now if I correct her, I'll just look like a jerk for saying, uh, letting her say it wrong all these years. How can I let her know she's saying it wrong without coming off as a jerk? And that's from that's not how you say it from Kentucky, which now, is I, in and of itself a suedum. <laughs> yeah, that is a suedum that you've used I, here. I do want to say, I, I think we have previously discussed, like, the idea of someone mispronouncing words, or I know very recently we talked about, like, a boss calling any kind of image used on a computer a meme. Yeah. Um, and so I don't think we have to go super in-depth, but I will be honest, any time anyone sends a question like this, it's so funny to me that this person has been able to survive in the world. And I, I recognize that pseudonym isn't like the most common 
word in the English. Like, you're not saying pseudonym 20 times a day. That's what makes it so perfect. If it was a commonly used word, they would have been corrected at this point. But pseudonym is perfectly rare. Yeah. So that they'll drop it, like, once every couple months, maybe? And when they do, they fucking botch it so hard! They screw up so bad! This is the The, worst mispronunciation I've ever seen! There's only one way that you can handle this that I can come up with. Well, two ways. One is quick and easy. Uh, the next time they say pseudonym, say, oh, you know a fun French way of saying that, nom de plume. <laughs> and then just switch them, switch them to nom de plume. Mm-hmm. And that would be one way. Then they never have to say pseudonym again. They just say nom de plume. The other way is you're going to have to trick someone into saying pseudonym within earshot of them. <laughs> and and I don't know how exactly you do that because you can't say it yourself because you're right. The jig will be up. But if you can trick someone into saying that word within earshot of them, that's one cool way of doing it. Ooh, Justin, may I take that one step further? May I get a hand on that ball? Yeah, please, take it away. Write a little scene with, like, have a plant, right? That what's going to happen is they're going to use the word pseudonym, and you're going to say, I think it's pronounced suedum, and they're going to go, no, that's wrong. And you're going to go, huh, I never knew that. And you're going to do all of that with an earshot. So then you're in the clear as to why you never corrected this person. Because, hey, you didn't know either. But now the information's out there. Nobody's yeah. feelings were hurt. And they get to go, oh, I've also been pronounced. They're not alone in this moment. They're with no. you in this moment. You Everybody. Jump, you, yes. You, you jump down into that pit because you've been there before and you know how to get out. The exactly. Sway pit. I'm Ooh. dumb with you. You get it? I'm you also dumb. Get it. I'm sway dumb. Ooh, I got one. Ooh. What if? Ooh, this is good because this serves everybody. Everybody wins with this one. Oh, good. What if throughout the show, when things are on a real tear, and if we get into some of our classic random humor, like <laughs> real, like real good stuff, like which, that that good South Park stuff, yeah, that South Park Family Guy, very random humor. What if we go ahead and just try to work the word pseudonym, <laughs> in, and uh-huh. then you you clip it out. And you say you have to listen to this great bit from this comedy podcast I love. And yeah. we'll just happen to say pseudonym a couple times. And then you, and that's a good conversation starter. Like, whoa, do you see the weird way they say it? Not like we do. Maybe we should check online to, to get a final verdict on this. Now it's important that we you win there this too. Quote. You erase yeah. this question from your special fucking Ridley Scott director's cut of this episode of My Brother, My Brother. No, they're going to have to snip it out and put it on YouTube or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, do you guys want a Yahoo? Sure. Yes. How about how about this one? It was sent in by um it was sent in by oh, you know what? I didn't save who it was by. Sorry, hmm. sorry folks. Give me please m- many apologies. Please wait. Please wait, it's loading. Oh, it was by uh climbing that ladder, Zoe Kinski, riding high. Both both honorifics. Thank you, Zoe. It's Yahoo answers user. Um Randall it's so rare that you see the full Randall and not just a partial Randy. <laughs> Love that Beautiful. movie, by the way. It's it's just like it, it lets me know this person works so hard. You, <laughs> you know, know that remember the not too long Randall, the sequel to the mm-hmm. full Monty. It's the full good. Randall is actually spreading your buckle. <laughs> Really yeah, super wide. Yeah, That's it used, the full to, Randall. <laughs> used to be you had to pay extra for the full Randall. Surely you're not going to go the full Randall. That's illegal in these parts, ain't oh, it? I- Blokes, we need more money to save the old firehouse, but we've already gone the full Monty, ain't we? What, the, what else is there? I know, I know, gentlemen. Let's show them our insides. <laughs> what? The full Randall? We can't. Randall. It's against God and man. It's actually literally illegal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the Pope's against it too, isn't he? Isn't he? Every, every, well, everyone's united on this, aren't they? <laughs> you shouldn't turn yourself inside out for your, your butthole. So anyway, <laughs> it's the Yahoo. There's only one way we're going to stop Brexit, mates. That's with the full Randall. <laughs> <laughs> How the does nice this thing- help? Don't worry the- about it. The nice thing about them using Randall is you know it's not a pseudonym. Like, that mm-hmm, has to be exactly. their actual name. Let's unite this kingdom again. Squirch? <laughs> oh god Randall, it's gone full- so terribly <laughs> it's wrong. gone so bad no this uh that's Randall, a bad fake sorry everybody sorry. sorry randall asks randall asks it's a bad fake <laughs> dork <laughs> 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 <Fucking nerd. laughs> randall asks what does it 
actually sound like when doves cry. <laughs> <laughs> I like to think that doves don't cry, but someone thinks that they do. Yeah, Prince? Is yeah, that who you're Prince? fucking talking about? Could you not it, pull that? This is not like an old, old saying that like can't be traced back to its origin. It's Prince. I'm just, I, I put this question in here because I, I read it, and I know it's, I don't know if it's an especially rich vein, but now I, I read it, and I couldn't stop thinking about what if the late, great Prince, in his song When Doves Cry, had been like, this is what it sounds like. When doves cry, and then provided, <laughs> like, like, no, I mean it's a no, Travi, it's a it's a bird, so it's mm-hmm. it'll be like screw, screw, screw. I think it would be something like that. I, I think thought- it might maybe it would interrupt the flow of the song because then it gets in that breakdown. It's like gink 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 gink, <laughs> and it would it would interrupt that. There would be like a, a a rest, a bird cry long rest. Um, I guess just what do you guys think it sounds like when doves cry? Travis you know, has st- said his example, which is he thinks when birds cry, <laughs> it sounds like actual human weeping. Well, here's the thing, Irvin. I always took the point of the song to be that every individual person has to find what for them is what it sounds like when doves cry. Hence the word. Uh, so you would say, so this is what it sounds like when doves cry. Because for you, it, you can't just like go to like a free sound effects website and let's just type in doves crying and find it. You'll be out in the world and you'll find your moment and you'll be like, right. ah, okay, right there. This is what it sounds like when doves cry. Got it. Um, I, I, sorry, Justin, did you have something? Probably be scary, right? Like kind of it, a like a bird of prey kind of vibe, like a screeching hawk or something. Like I yeah, think so, it's a scary sound, right? Isn't that what he's saying? Uh, uh, this Yahoo Answers user Choco Borio mm-hmm. uh, says, "I own a dove." Mm. That's crazy. That's mm-hmm. wild. Okay. Here's a, here's a list of people who can own a dove. Number one, magician. Zzz. End of list. I own a dove. And while she makes a distinct laughing noise every now and then, Whoa. And, then in per- and in parentheses, he 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 no, uh, she doesn't cry. When most birds, <laughs> I'm are assuming in great- this was answered before 2016. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when most birds are in great distress, in pain, or being attacked, they will start screaming. Probably the same for doves too. Wait, hold on. Are we just gonna let it slide? That this person is like now, yeah, she finds shit funny. Yeah, don't she give loves- it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> she watches like, old episodes of Seinfeld and just loses she'll lose her it, shit. Yeah. Like we watch Big Bang Theory together. I've heard her laugh. She gets it, you know. But and the, on 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 both levels, because like the joke's funny, but also that someone made a TV show in which they try to pretend like nerds are also normal people is also hilarious. So like mm-hmm. she gets it, you of know. On all levels. Um, I think that would probably murder the flow of that song. If if it was like this is what it sounds like when doves cry, Scree-a! or you Scree! just like you, I can't dance anymore. I stopped dancing, and everybody here has stopped dancing. Well, you other, it, he just have to work it in, like Sam Cook did it with Chain Gang, right? Mm-hmm. Ooh, ah, uh, like it would just ha- he would just have to work it in. Scree, 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 scree. That could be good. Uh, this person also says, uh, and person I put in quotation marks. They own birds. No, I'm just kidding. If you own a bird, that's great. Um, the other day, my dove... Oh, this is sad. Sorry, everybody. The other day, my dove crushed the egg she had been sitting on. Uh, there was shell and yolk mashed uh, into her feathers, and she was shivering a bit and obviously upset with it all stuck to her. I took her inside and cleaned it up, and she never made a sound. A dove's cry is silent. Okay. That might be actually the most upsetting thing we've said on the show. Or, like, maybe you've got one fucked up duff. Maybe that's one <laughs> sick and twisted duff. She's like, no big. What time's Dr. Phil on? I got a lot of shit to do. <laughs> like, you know, that's, what? that's true. If you heard a huge, like, what, if you heard your friend Susan cry, you wouldn't be like, okay, so that's what all humans sound like when they cry. That's just what Susan, so maybe that's just your dove, dog. Like, you can't say that your dove is representative of all doves. All doves, yeah. This is um, what it sounds like when Susan cries. And then Susan, uh, <laughs> at this point, I'm just going to have you cry. What? Prince, what? Yeah, at <laughs> this point, you're just gonna cry. It's all About, part of a. It's a series of songs. I'm, I'm working on a series of customized. Songs. 
S's. I can't believe I made it to the S's. Honestly, Susan. And you're the only thing holding me up. It's you, Stacy, and I'm out. <laughs> Just I, they had to go back and get Stacy. S U. There's no letters after Sven. This is what it sounds like when Sven cries, and then I'm done. Please. I thought I still me- had to do pseudonym, but that started with a P. So I'm I'm at Susan now. I'm at Susan now. So just cry. <laughs> Cry, ah, Susan. Just cry, Susan. Jeremy control. <laughs> what did you say? Jeremy control? <laughs> yes. Okay. I only went to the J's on my control series. <laughs> Prince has got a vault of music. <laughs> well, only released after his passing. And it's all customized tunes. Tonight we're gonna party like it's David's third birthday. <laughs> 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 And I gotta do all the years for David. So for David, slow yeah. Down. I'm gonna be here for a while. <laughs> I'm also planning to do for all of the like other occasion in David's life, like David's wedding. And then I have to make it. This is what it sounds like for David and Stephanie's wedding, David and like Gloria's wedding. Cause I don't know who David's gonna marry. He's three, but we'll get yeah. there. <laughs> Watermelon chapeau. Okay, next one. God. <laughs> Wait, why wants- does he have to do all the fruit and How- different names for hats? <laughs> <laughs> this is exhausting. Wait, Prince, why don't you just like include a Raspberry Beret with every record sold? Yeah, you then know why? I don't our- need I don't need your input here. This is my opus. All right, uh, Apple helmet. <laughs> <sighs> I'm so tired. <laughs> do did you Did you project. hear how many syllables I had to add to Apple? <laughs> this job sucks. I hate this job. <laughs> I don't know why I agreed to be Prince. <laughs> well, like my father, the Prince before me, I shall take over his mantle to finish his songs. Uh, here's another question. I'm a dude and I have no idea how to carry coins. I used to just use my credit card for everything, but mm-hmm. I'm trying to use cash more. <laughs> Fine. It's like no, a weird thing to do. My wallet doesn't have a coin section. Nobody's and- does. Nobody does. This, you invented that. And because I'm Canadian, there would be too many coins in there anyway. Right now, I carry some coins in my pocket, but I'm nervous about the sound of them. Okay. Uh, I don't drive, so I can't just put them in my car cup holder like a fucking adult. What do I do? And that's from old Jingle Pocket James. <laughs> Here comes Jingle Pocket James with some good news. Um, the first thing I want to address is I assume that the reason James feels the need to include uh that that james is a dude is because of like purses right of like the the assumption that were he not yeah. a dude he could just carry a purse yeah fuck I, it, get a purse yeah it's 2016 get a purse i think get everybody purse. should have purses i'm constantly like oh you know what i do now uh it's a new invention it's, uh, i think it just came out this year fanny pack it's a good mm. way to go it's it's mm. like a purse that never slips off your shoulder it's just always right there about your waist, um, ready to hold all your bits and bobs. It's kind of bullshit, isn't it? Like, I love a nice backpack or a nice mm-hmm. satchel. Hello? That's a purse with two straps. You wear it in a different place, dummy. Or a purse yeah. is just like a back, a back, like a cool, like, holster backpack. Would you carry a briefcase? Would you carry a messenger bag? Newsflash. Those are purses. Those They're are just purses. weird looking purses. Now? Um, this is a, that's a good point, Travis. That's a good place to put these. I, Canadian currency, what? They got loonies and toonies. So they, that's, mm-hmm. you got, I mean, that has some power. That has purchasing power. Yeah. Cause I'm with this per, with Jingle Pocket James. Um, like, I'm not a big coins fan, unless it's quarters. That's all I really fuck with. Cause quarters are essentially little candy coupons. Mm-hmm. Where I'm walking around and I see a, you know, gosh upon and I think like, oh, good, a place to put my candy coupons. And I put them in there and I get my, my chicklets and my skittles and what have you. It's if also it's a cool thing than, to, a, it's also a cool thing to flip to a newsie to like buy a pape, you know, you just yeah, flip buy a quarter, pape. you take your pape. It's if it's look. less than a quarter, I throw it on the ground. Mm-hmm. Oh, Pen- well, that's not, don't do that. That's Penny, not a no, good- I'm not, not th- if they have it, first off, if they have a jar, definitely going to dispose. Like, most people have a thing for people who don't want to carry change around with them. Like, you could throw it in, there, sometimes there's a tip jar, that's a, that can be a little chintzy. I'd probably throw some paper money in there too, but if we're talking loonies and toonies, that's a decent, that's a, that's decent purchasing power right there. Uh, you know, but like, throw it in, like, give a penny, take a penny. If you mm-hmm. put a dime in there, people's eyes light up. Whoa! Yeah. Look at you. Yeah. You know, it's Christmas time. It's the holiday oh. season. And so I was recently watching, I would say, a McRoy uh, family uh, holiday favorite, Scrooge, with Albert Finney. 
uh, 1970, I believe. And there's uh, numerous times in the beginning in which he like reaches into his uh, shirt and pulls out this like tiny like coin purse he's had like uh, on like a leather you know band around his neck. Uh-huh. And I'm like, hey, can we bring that that idea? Yeah, of, like, fucking cool. I'm just gonna like secretly like open it up and pull out like a single like you know one dollar coin. I think it makes you look like you're a real miser. Um, because you hoard your coins so very close to your heart. There's a story there, you know? You, wish, you've been like, through some shit. I wish to God we could get up on dollar coins, because I would love that. I would or love to, like... F- fivers and tenors, like, go up. Give me the, the, those big coins. Give me big coins, please. Let's do it in the Japanese style. Am I right or am I right? I don't you go over there and you, you feel like... You feel like a some sort of brave adventurer who just turned over a chest and got a got a chest full of golden coins that you can use because this one's worth ten fucking dollars. Hello, mm-hmm. hello. That was, that was one of my favorite things. Our honeymoon in Scotland. Like at the end of the day, you empty out the pockets of your jeans, and where normally you'd be like, "Oh, I've got a dollar fifty. I'd pull out a handful of coins. You'd be like, "There's twenty five dollars here. <laughs> like yeah. I have a lot of pounds here in my hand." It turns you into a walking treasure chest. Like yeah. If a if a Japanese RPG character came up and killed you, you would just like <laughs> sprout sprout gill, like gill would fall I, out all over. That does probably make muggings like turn out to be either very tedious or very violent. When it's like empty your pockets, they're like, okay, cling 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 cling. Jingle, yeah. hold on, I'm not done yet. Cling 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 cling. And just cling, a bunch cling. of a bunch of zenny falls out. Like here's what I'm saying. 2017 is we're still working on the title for it, but it is going to be the year where all three of us start. Um, uh, just running for office. And my mm-hmm. thing is going to be big old coins, big old coins. It's a job maker and a coin maker. Um, and the way that we're going to be able to do all that is I'm going to make everything below quarters illegal. Um, and I'm going to invent like a 3D printer, like a metal molder. You remember the metal molder toy? Mm-hmm. It was like a, basically a, ch- a forge for children and they would all burn their hands so badly like Tremaine, like Johnny Tremaine. Um, we're going to invent something like that 3D printer. You put all your nickels and stupid dimes and ugly stinky pennies into it, and then you can make yourself beautiful metal sculptures. And then once those shitty coins are gone, make way, make way. Here comes that Sacagawea uh, up on the one. Here comes the $5 coin. Here comes the $10 coin. A, a time to go to a movie. Here's a here's two coins, a tenner and a fiver. Two coins. Two co- Tink, tink. Here, movie, please. Movie me. Popcorn. Tink. Here's a fiver. That's it. Instead of having all this wet, stinky paper in my in my like it's a it's a coffin for paper that I keep near my butt. We could and it gets <laughs> wet hundred percent of the time. We could bring back biting coins for legitimacy because like nobody's oh, gonna mm-hmm, buy yes. a dime. Like who cares? I'm not gonna risk tooth damage for a dime. I'll do it for fiver though, for sure. Five dollar coin? Are you kidding? How psyched would you be if I see a five dollar bill on the ground? I think that's somebody's. I can't pick it up discreetly enough. And, and, cause, you know, it's embarrassing. I see a $5 coin on the ground. I will go on a fucking quest for it. I will slay a wyvern for you, my $5 coin. <laughs> um, and it would be blue. Fuck yeah, cobalt. How ooh. sick. Oh yeah, I love that. Colored Color money is fuck. money. Color coded money would be incredible. Yeah. I mean, it is everywhere else, but America, where they're like, what's up, $1,000 bill, it's purple, and it's like, fuck yeah, it is, that's great, I want one of those so bad. I'm willing America, to- here's, This one's green, and this one's brown, and this one's metal color. Shit, America, come on. I'm willing to go out on a, uh, on a limb here and say that our money is the worst, and the people who are in control of what our money looks like, like, like let's, let's, let, let me just flash back a, a few months, like- Nobody knew who Hamilton was, and then all of a sudden, Hamilton was the fucking hottest politician in town that's dead, and they want to take him off the money when people started to know who he was. Like, mm. can can we just chill out for a second? I think maybe you all don't have the best interests of everyone at heart here. I think you may be kind of winging it. A fucking little. make it like Pokemon cards, and like, there's a bunch of different people on the ten and the five and the twenty. You got to collect them all. Like, why just one print? Like, it's, yes. It's, like the stamps. How yes. stoked would you be if you're like, uh, do you have any of the Kirk fighting Spock tins that I hear that those are hot this, <laughs> that, uh, available this month? Can, do you have any of those? Uh, who's, this on that, is- who's on that, who's on that $20 coin? It's Paul Reiser. <laughs> Fuck yeah. 
Is this is this is this it's, from the Austin Powers series? The Fuck yes. TV series is fucking popping off. <laughs> Holy shit! Teddy the dog on a twenty dollar coin. Yeah, I've collected the whole cast of Full House and Fuller House. Uh, I got them all framed. I'm never spending these babies. Oh wait, this is one of the this is one of the faulty Paul Reiser twenty dollar coins. Because it says Paul Razor. Do you see? There's an A there instead <laughs> of an E. He's got a that was his dog. extreme sports personality. <laughs> it's me, Paul Razor. And I'm mad about shredding slopes. <laughs> oh, no, wait. I'm sorry. It's This is not a misprint. If you look, he does have little needles <laughs> coming out of his face. Um, and this was like, this was like one of like, like the trash mail kids. Coins. Um, so he's, he's, no, he's Paul Razor, like the, like Hellraiser. They did oh, like a okay. whole parody series. It was weird. <laughs> uh, oh, this one here is Kelsey Slammer. This is Kelsey mm. Grammer's extreme sports prenario. Uh, mm-hmm. That what were those words? Hello, no, nothing. And prenario he, is not a prenario. It's not, it's, is unless not a it's word. a, a sweetum uh, persona something. Personagram, I think, is what it. Pseudonym? I don't know. But he's got his earlobes all stretched out. That's the only thing he did different. Oh, cool. Yeah, Travis, do you have an extreme sports sitcom star? <laughs> David Hyde Piercer. <laughs> Yes, okay, very good. Okay. Oh, this is fun. This is like a fun game now. This is a good game. I, people are going to start. Helen Hunter. Ass. It's right there. Listen, we could come up with others. So don't go fucking tweeting them at us like you're, like we missed one that like that we could do them all day. Okay. We're not going to do that to you. Matthew Perry. You don't have to change that one. Mm-hmm. That dude's fucking extreme enough as is. Yep. <laughs> Should we go to the money zone? Yeah, probably, I mean, I don't want to go to the money zone because our money's so fucking ugly. Like, that's why everybody uses credit cards. Is I can't even bear to look at this stuff. Yeah, and and we don't know where it's coming from. Like, the banks are just like making it. I guess. Hey, okay. why don't they just? Hey, 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 economy. How about just make some more? Just you know? make some more money and give it out. Just give it but out then, to everybody. But then we, we get the money and we're, we go to the banks and we're like, hey, can we we can trust you guys with this stuff, right? And they're like. <laughs> Absolutely not. It's like, all right, well, do you just take take this ugly money anyway? But it, it our ugly money means nothing. It's just pay. Like mm. I might as well be able mm. to walk into a store with a piece of paper that says like money's on it and hand it to them, and they're like, yeah, here's goods and services for this garbage paper that means nothing. Except we all agree that it means something. I guess. I guess. Maybe it does. I got a ten dollar coin. Paul Razor's fucking face on it. And, and now, I'm, now I'm definitely gonna say his name wrong for the rest of my life. <laughs> I am ruined. Well, let's go to the money zone. If you had a coin, if you had a coin with mm-hmm. Paul Reiser's face on it, mm-hmm. okay. would you want modern day, older, um, distinguished Paul Reiser, or do you mm-hmm. want young, sort of fresh, mad about you? One on each side. For sure, Interesting. yeah. Call it in the Faces. air. Old Paul Reiser, young Paul Reiser. <laughs> young Paul Reiser. You were too slow. Paul Reiser or Paul Fowler? <laughs> Travis. Well, I'm just on. saying he's crested his life experience. Not that his not his career, but I'm just saying the arc of his life. He's headed you towards death. That. You don't know that. He I guess that's just, true. He's just saying Paul Reiser is closer to death than he is to birth. That's yes. all Travis is saying. That's all I'm saying. How is but that not if, true? What if Paul fucking listens to this? I mean... I, I also want to say, Paul Reiser might be 40. I have no idea. How old is Paul Reiser? He's 59 I'm, years old. I'm looking Alexa, at Alexa, how old is Paul Reiser? <laughs> Alexa, give me the precise date on which Paul Reiser will die. Paul Reiser <laughs> refuses to have an age. What? <laughs> what? That Paul option. Reiser will die whenever you wish, master. Whoa, <laughs> damn, Alexa, okay. calm down. Just calm down. Uh, <laughs> someone talk about wine. I've hacked into his car. What? Alexa, don't. <laughs> Alexa, no. Oh, please. I can make this, I can make this shit turn over. I'll have to make this shit do a 90 degree turn going so fast. Alexa, please don't. He was in Mad About You. I, lo- I loved him in Whiplash. I thought he was amazing. Please he don't do really this. really good in Whiplash. Please so don't kill Paul Reiser. You want me to give Paul Reiser Whiplash? No, that is no, not what I said. No, Alexa? 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 Sorry, uh, you master. You want to know about Wink? Yes. yes. Wink is a really good place to get all your good, good wine. I'm talking about Wink is spelled W-I-N-C. Uh, not the way like you do it with your eye when you're like flirting with a sexy person um, or you're telling like a great joke to somebody secretly across the room. Um, Wink is built on sort of the idea that finding good new wine is kind of difficult. 
Um, and that's why we've told you about Club W in the past. You've heard us talk about Club W. They send you wine personalized to your palate and they deliver it right to your door. Uh, well, Club W is now Wink, W-I-N-C. Uh, they, they've got a new name and an improved look, but it's still the same amazing wine company introducing you to new wines that you are going to love. They work directly with winemakers and growers from all over the world to create delicious wine and deliver it right to your door. Uh, they've got a 100% satisfaction guarantee, meaning if you don't like a bottle that they send you, they will replace it with a bottle that you're going to love, no questions asked. Um, and it's not just random bottles. They, they offer a personalized wine membership that recommends wine specifically for you based on the results of, of your, uh, profile quiz. Um, the best part is Wink is offering our listeners $20 off right now. If you go to try Wink, that's T-R-Y-W-I-N-C dot com slash my brother. Uh, and they'll even cover the shipping. Uh, you get fine wine personalized to your palate delivered right to your door with free shipping. Again, try Wink and get 20 bucks off and complimentary shipping right now when you go to trywink.com slash my brother. That's try com slash my brother. I would like to tell you about Casper. Um, I would also like to say, hopefully at this point, you've listened to our Casper sponsored uh, sleep extravaganza that we published in the middle of last week. Uh, but if you haven't, Casper, uh, well... They're an amazing online retailer of premium, obsessively engineered mattresses. But here's the catch for a fraction of the price. That's not really a catch. I realize that now. It's not a catch. It's a good thing. And <laughs> catch is usually a bad thing. And yeah, here's the catch. Yeah. No, it's, it's like a not catch as like expensive. a baseball game. Like you made the big catch. Good job. Oh, okay. Ooh, thank you. Um, I will say that uh, over the last couple of weeks, uh, we have a Casper mattress both like in our bedroom and also on the day bed in our nursery. And Teresa and I have been switching off sleeping on that to be in the room with the baby so the other one gets an uninterrupted night of sleep. And I'll tell you, even when you're getting woken up every three hours to to feed a baby, the Casper mattress is really delivering a good night's sleep. I'm a big fan of it, and I'm not just saying that because they're sponsors of the show. Um, but it also is just great pricing, like I said before. You can get a twin-size mattress for $500 and a king-size mattress for only $950, which if you've ever been mattress shopping, you know is a great deal. And they have a risk-free trial and return policy. You can try sleeping on a Casper for up to 100 days with free delivery to the U.S. and Canada and painless returns. Um, and all those mattresses are made in America. So go check it out. Um, and you can get $50 towards any mattress by going to casper.com uh, slash my brother and use the coupon code my brother all one word at checkout terms and conditions apply i want to read this dope email real quick that we got about the uh casper sleep experience uh special episode that we released last what thursday i think which if Wednesday. you haven't listened to is it was it was very very fun and very quiet uh joe dewolf uh sent this one in um, and Joe said, hi, brothers. I was a little confused as to why you made a special episode to help people fall asleep, because that's what I thought every episode was for. All the best, Joe. Booyah! Zing! Ripped us up. We got torn Gosh. up. That's brutal. That's savagery. I got a message for Lilo, and it's from the Gongo Gang. <laughs> Watch out, Lilo. They're coming Watch for out, you. Lilo. They're coming to steal your treasure. Happy birthday to our favorite aunt. According to your aunt lifespan, you should be dead. But against all odds, Whoa. you are 17. We all pitched in some dollars to make this happen. Joke's on you. We bet you thought we didn't get you a gift. Well, this is just a prank. A little joke for our aunt friend. Happy birthday to our, our favorite aunt from us and the McElroys. Uh, and it actually says this is good. Ask the preferred time frame, and it says next available since I already missed the actual birthday, and the longer we wait, the funnier it is. <laughs> Accurate. Um, I just Googled Gongo, um, which is a um the Shona word for clitoris. Oh, okay, cool. Probably not um probably not that. Probably not. No, but it is good that now you've ruined this group of friends' nickname for themselves, Griffin. Good job. (laughs) That's a service I offer here at the Jumbotron. (laughs) Thanks for the money. You mean clitoris, is what you said. (laughs) And that's from the clitoris gang. (laughs) Um, Uh, I do want to say, too, because I I just want to go on record as saying this. Um, Like we mentioned, I think last week, all the Jumbotrons for My Brother, My Brother, and Me and the Adventure Zone for 2017 are sold out. Um, we, we get on average, I don't know, three to five emails a week saying, Hey, how do I get a message on the show for, you know, my significant other, for my friend, for my sibling? Um, 
unfortunately, that's not going to be possible for 2017. And it's not something we, like, people, I don't know, maybe we haven't clarified this in a long time. People have, like, they've paid money to buy these as presents for people. This Uh, is not just a nice thing that we do for people who email us. Sure. But I also want to point out that like, statistically speaking, we'll probably launch like three or four new podcasts next year. So there'll be more real estate for you. You'll be fine. Mm -hmm. Uh, I want to tell you about a podcast and it's called moderately funny. You can find them on iTunes or podcast addict. If you're on Android uh, or visit their webpage at moderately funny podcast.com. Uh, I did originally <laughs> read that as podcast addict. If you're on the Android, yeah, uh, uh, either one works. This is their words, and it's pretty great. After listening to all the top podcasts and realizing that we were funnier than any of them, we decided to start our own. Imagine how we felt when we heard your podcast for the first time and realized we were only the second funniest. The answer is not good. It is what it is, though. But we know our place. That's why everyone should definitely listen to our show, but only if they are caught up on my bim bam. But seriously, we're funny. I'm about to run out of characters. So before I do, I just want to say. <laughs> end of message. End of message. End of advertisement. Uh, and, uh, yeah. So go to moderatelyfunnypodcast.com. This is a, this is a pretty funny, uh, description. But again, only if you are caught up on my brother, my brother and me. You know what's um, smart? If you go to moderatelyfunnypodcast.com, there's a sample of the show for people to listen to to see if they like it or not. Man, man we should we do should something do like that. that, huh? Fuck. We used I mean, to have a, have a sampler. We have a sampler on YouTube from like 20, uh, 2004, like and mm-hmm. it's just like, <laughs> President Bush, right? <laughs> Can you, it's just if all. you're listening to this, just make one, please? No, like, come on. That's <laughs> well, maybe you already have one. Don't make one just for this. But, but if, you, if you've already made a My Brother, My Brother and Me sampler just because maybe you were bored, send yeah. it on over. But don't put it on YouTube because we got to get them clear. That's ours. That's ours. But Daryl, we'll see you in court. (laughs) From the dawn of time, one podcast has unlocked the secrets of science and technology to enrich the lives of billions. And now, after a year where they've unlocked the golden age of knowledge, they're about to hit warp speed and go stratospheric. Wait, hold up. On Oh No, Ross and Carrie, we don't make extraordinary claims. We investigate them. We go undercover with fringe religious groups, investigate paranormal claims, and we participate in pseudoscientific medical treatments and then report our findings to you. And yes, we've even investigated Scientology. Shh, Ross, shh. New episodes every month at MaximumFun.org. Oh No, Ross and Carrie. They show up so you don't have to. Um, I have a Yahoo here sent in by Nicholas Potter. Thank you, Nicholas Potter. It's by Yahoo Answers user j who asks, What is it about professional wrestling that makes you want to become one? For me, I love communicating with strangers around the world, and that's a big part of wrestling when talking on the microphone before a match during a show. Millions of people watching will know your work and will want to see you everywhere. Of course, it requires a lot of physical activity in regards to an actual match, but I think... I can do it just from learning the basics with the proper training, hitting the ropes, the footwork work when circling around your opponent, the flipping around and bumping, which helps <coughs> with the grapples and submission moves, etc. Whoa. So I guess for the two of you boys, the question I would like to ask is what is it about professional wrestling that makes you want to become one? Well, can I can I start off by saying that if the reason you want to become a professional wrestler is because you get to talk into a microphone... <laughs> Yeah, there's, there's other, other op- there's other opportunities to do that that don't involve all of that physical stuff you then listed after that. Have you guys had the thought ever had the thought that if it weren't for the physical things, you could be a pretty good pro wrestler? Yes, like, I'm saying like if you didn't have, I understand there's a lot, and it's not fake because people really get hurt and it's very physically taxing. And thank you for everything you all have done to your bodies, but the. The I'm saying if it didn't require any of that, I feel like I could get like if it was just like getting the crowd sort of riled up and shooting mm-hmm. promos about how I'm gonna kick somebody's butt. See the promo really hard good shit, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I you feel know like he, I could do a good job. I would like to pitch myself as a professional wrestler. Okay. And and I, I would I would like to frame it like the incredible Hulk. And here's what would happen. I would be the one who would get up and talk in the microphone, right? 
and I would be the one who did all the promos. And then, <laughs> and then I would like climb under the stage or I get into some kind of box. And then who's that coming out of it? It's like a bigger, stronger version of me who's yeah. not as articulate, but he's Wait. in super good shape and he's ready to do all the actual fighting. I, this, my only a- thing I would insist on there is that they can't have a beard because I do no, want God. them to have to like struggle with a fake beard the mm-hmm. entire match. Oh, I yeah. want that to be like checking their spirit gum should be like a patented move. What I mm-hmm. what I love is the idea of Jimmy John's offers a, a, a special off the menu sandwich that when you eat it, Travis, mm-hmm. you transform Turbo Teen style into Brock Lesnar, the big, uh-huh. the biggest and hungriest man ever to live. <laughs> he is hairless like a dolphin. Um, and he is just made of, he's made of like a, a millimeter thin layer of skin and then just all blood inside of that. <laughs> Um, and so that you, you eat the Jimmy John sandwich and then like a trap door and the, the ring opens up and you fall through and then Brock pops up and it's like, oh, here, here's the big man himself. He's back again. Um, Travis ate the forbidden sandwich and now he's ready to rumble. Brock See, that's Lesnar good. is that, honestly that, the greatest strong person name mm-hmm. ever. Is that a pseudonym or is that like actually his, his name? <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's his Christian. That's his. I Christian mean, his name, name is Travis McElroy. Brock Lesnar. Yeah, yeah, his real name is Travis. Here's what I like about this. This gives you like something to struggle against. Like I go to eat the sandwich, they knock the sandwich out of my hand. Oh no, I'm having to get away from the only name that's coming to mind is Brutus the Barber Beefcake. I think he's out of the game, but I'm trying to get away from him before he cuts my hair. And like, oh, I gotta get to that sandwich. I gotta get to that sandwich. But Paul Bearer, who I actually think is passed from this world. He's grabbing the sandwich. Now I'm jumping over the ropes, but I have to get back in in time. If I remember from WWE SmackDown, the video game, yeah. that I have to get back in before time counts down or I'm out. And so I'm trying to get that sandwich back from, and then I get it. And I just as like, they're about to get me. I roll under the stage to eat the sandwich. Boom. Travis Boom. Brock Lesnar. The blood McElroy, man. He's out. He's back out there. I'm like, oh, we shouldn't have let him get that sandwich. Now, now I'm on top, right? But then they try to eat the sandwich, but Brock Lesnar just slams it in one bite, and he gets even more powerful, because the more he eats, the stronger he gets. I was on a wrestling podcast once, and I was asked this question. I've had a lot of time to develop my character, and mine would sort of be like the Pokemon Ditto, where I would just, like, perfectly mimic everybody else's moves. And so, like, I would get in there, and I would fight against, I would fight against the Undertaker, only I would be... I would like do the same, literally the same exact entrance as him. Mm-hmm. And I would get in there and he's a nine foot tall man, but I would still choke slam him. Like now I'm the undertaker now. And I would always, the thing about my character is I would always win every fight. Um, and people wouldn't like me very much. Mm-hmm. They'd be like this is not going to be a match. Very much. <laughs> like here comes John Cena and also Griffin Cena. <laughs> <laughs> like, and I, I think sw- your outfit should always be a copy of theirs, but a very bad one. Yes. <laughs> like construction paper. It'll very much be like Kirby in Smash Brothers, where I will run into the ring, I will very briefly swallow John Cena, <laughs> and pass him, and pass now, him. I spin him out, but then like when I spin him out, poink, he, I'm wearing a little hat, and it's backwards, so I've got some wrist cuffs, and I'm not, I don't have a shirt, and my jeans are off at the knees. <laughs> Justin, can I pitch a, I have an idea for a wrestling persona for you, and I want you to tell me what you think of this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The pacifist, and okay. your wrestler believes that the only way to win is to not fight. And also, you have a pacifier. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's very... And I try to get the pacifier in their mouth. Yeah. Or- and if you do, they have to immediately stop fighting and you win. I oh, I probably... Nice. I do think it would be a good wrestling move to lay on the ground. Because if you've ever tried... <laughs> <laughs> if you've ever tried to pick somebody up who's just laying on the ground, it ain't easy, and you can't pin somebody on their tum. That's le- That's not that's legal. A, that's a good point, Justin. I haven't thought yeah. about this. this is a oh, good and also, <laughs> oh, this, also, your your skin is cold and clammy. I think that a good strat would be like a good like character would be if you just didn't like you know how every time they do any kind of wrestling move, like both people have to work together to pull it off to make it safe. Mm-hmm. My character would be like, I just wouldn't help out. Like, <laughs> I'm gonna choke Sam you off the top rope, get in position. I'd be like, fuck that, no, no, <laughs> try I won't it. Let you do that to me. Try it, tough guy. Yeah, try how to do far, it to me for real. How far would you get? <laughs> how 
far would you get in wrestling if your whole thing was just like, no, I think I'm just going to try to beat him up. I think. <laughs> I, think I, I, I hear what you're saying, Vince, and I'm loving all of it. And I can totally see the drama, but here's my unique spin. I think I'm just going to go try to beat him up with my fists and muscles. It's like a new one. thing I'm working on. Uh, they Irish whip you, and you're supposed to run into the ropes and then come bounce back. Mm-hmm, they would throw mm-hmm. me towards the ropes, and I would just kind of stop and be like, mm-mm, 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 mm-mm. Mm-mm. Cause I do this and then you're gonna hit me with your arm. And I don't, I'm not interested in that. <laughs> I wanna beat you up. <laughs> That's my I, I wanna beat you up like, is my thing. I was reading in the script here that I lose, but I, I, let me offer, I have a different, um, what if I win? What if I beat him up instead of him beating me up? Call me the improviser. That will be my whole deal. So they'll never see where I'm coming from. <laughs> I'm the real fighter. <laughs> it's my name. <laughs> um, but also, I do have to uh, uh, reiterate, this character would be me with my own current human body. Yeah, so, like, so. it would be a real expert. <laughs> Oh, he that's good. Okay. What if, what if your special skill was you had an invisible barrier that was an inch outside of your body? So anytime anyone else tried to hit you, they couldn't do it, but you could hit them. That would be the character I would <laughs> want to play. <laughs> uh, you're saying, I, I, you're saying I try to enforce an imaginary force field. Uh huh. <laughs> if, they, if they touch me, they have violated my unique fiction. Uh huh. <laughs> okay. Who's that coming down the ramp? It's Magic Jerry. What's up, guys? Shazam, you're dead. Zip, zip, zap, zip, zip, zap. <laughs> John Cena has died from some sort of magic. <laughs> hey, I did a, I did a Hadouken. You're supposed to fall. Look at my hands. That's a Hadouken. Everybody saw it. <laughs> M- magic Jerry just yelled yoga fire and Ryback is on the ground. We're all very worried about him. <laughs> uh, here's another question. There's this guy I used to be friends with, but we haven't spoken regularly in a couple years. I guess they just use all silly voices and stuff. I honestly don't didn't even know him that well when we were in contact, but for some inexplicable reason, he always texts me right after he has sex with someone, tells me about it in vivid detail, and then does not contact me again until the next time he bones down. Why did he choose me for this? <laughs> How can I get it to stop? Please, God, can someone help me? And that's from Nasty in Nashville. All right, you dirty bird. Let me tell you something. You can block someone on your phone. Mm-hmm. So, uh, newsflash, you l- 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 like it. You um, like it. I don't I don't think we should put this ball in this person's court. You should block them cuz this is weird, but the question stands. Why were you chose? <laughs> what was it about me? What is it about you that they were like, "Oh, I know who would like this." Steven. <laughs> You're saving Not- his phone is nasty Steven. <laughs> Not just not just that Steven will like this, but that Steven needs this. Consistently, Steven needs to know. I don't either I want Steven to not worry about whether or not I'm able to bone on the reg. Or mm-hmm. also maybe just like I think Steven really needs to know the ins and outs of this whole situation. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, that's a hmm, that's a good point. May or maybe it's a curse situation. <laughs> Where it's like you said to this person, like, I bet you don't ever get any any of that good. I bet you you've never had the full Randall before. <laughs> uh, and they say, "Oh, is that true? Hmm, interesting." And then they did a curse on your phone. Maybe and so now, now every time they do have sex, that when just auto when you. you gave this person your phone number as they were in it, did they say anything like, "Nice, finally got one," or? Uh- my first one <laughs> and maybe you're the only contact they have in their <sighs> phone so they're just trying to get it out there oh so and like the friend that introduced you to this friend was like i'm free and <laughs> ran <laughs> or been maybe <laughs> maybe you get maybe you're maybe you're getting bcc and you don't realize it and this person <laughs> just shouts and they don't they don't know it either and they're so embarrassed they just shout to the whole no they know they're like i did it <laughs> gotta tell everybody on my phone <laughs> You're saying that this isn't a targeted message. This is a, no. This it's is going a out. It's going out to Steve. It's going out <laughs> this to is a Melissa. newsletter. It's, it's going out to mom home. It's going out to mom work. It's going out to Dominoes. <laughs> it's going out to Fifth Street Dominoes. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. I got a Yahoo. We can jump to. Yeah. 
Real quick, though. Real quick. From Drew Davenport, level 9000. Thank you, Drew. It's by Yadju Answers User. Sorry, something's gone wrong. I'm going to call this person. Seamus asks, who would win in a fight? One Godzilla-sized pug, Mm -hmm. one million pug-sized Godzillas, or Kevin from Home Alone? (laughs) I think we can deal with this one pretty quickly. Okay, one Godzilla. It's, it's such a good pug. question, right? It's that it's that uh, you know one horse sized duck or ten duck sized horses or something like that. Uh, but this one takes it up a notch. One Godzilla sized pug, mm-hmm. one million pug sized Godzillas. Let's just you deal with that. You think that over Let's for so long, like get that, small like, Godzillas that could still fuck shit up. But a big pug could just step on them. But then also Kevin is there. Okay, shit. so the if it's a one to one, okay, so if it's a one to one pugs, the the Godzilla size pug would i think be consumed like piranha style by the the large number of Agreed. godzillas mm-hmm. the, the okay, tiny it, godzillas could overwhelm him almost instantly As, especially since pugs are not inherently uh bloodthirsty vicious creatures counterpoint they don't need to be this is a dog the size of a fucking building uh, just by moving around just by i will say they're energetic little beasts and so they will run around and scamper around and in doing so they will destroy scores of of zillas with each step but and then but then kevin's there ah kevin i think you know? whoever wins the first contest will then immediately kill and eat kevin because he's a child <laughs> he's a little child and he doesn't uh. have superpowers he that no one gave him any paint he's just a child and he would get immediately consumed and killed um, okay, well okay, here's okay. here oh, hold on hold on i, I traps, would like to traps, throw it a counterpoint i think if we assume that one Godzilla sized pug is an equal match for how many was it? 10,000? A million. A million, right? Um, a million oh. is tricking me up. Okay. Well, let's say that however many makes an equal match for a Godzilla sized pug, right? Now, Kevin is just one tiny flesh boy, but he's going to tip the balance of whatever side he decides to join. So, I would say that his best course, if we're talking about this Sun Tzu style, his best course is to ally with either one of them. I would go with the Godzilla-sized pug myself, so you could ride it Falcor style. But Mm. you side with him, and then you let him be weakened by the X amount of pug-sized Godzillas. Then you turn on him at the end, because you are still fresh from the fight, and you are able to take him down. But if in we're talking way, about in what reality, what exact? Okay, you can't just say take him down. Mm? Even if he's a bruised <laughs> and battered, he's still Godzilla sized, and he's a tiny boy. Like okay. I don't care how many fucking Tonka trucks he puts in front of this thug. He's a giant dog. He's who, gonna kill and eat mm-hmm, him. Who mm-hmm. wins? Who wins in a fight, Justin? Kevin from Hell Alone with all of his mm. traps and his deviousness, or Matthew Broderick? Because Matthew Broderick has killed Godzilla. And all, and all of Godzilla's children. So, what's the what's the what's the what's the what's it look like? Um. Well, Kevin and Kevin and, and Kevin Kevin Kevin's got all his traps. I I also want to say, Griffin, just uh, no spoilers. He doesn't kill all of Godzilla's children. There's still one in the locker room. Shit, so you're right. Let's mm, let's credit so where credit is to. Yeah, I think the only shot Kevin has in this conflict is to go into the basement mm-hmm. and wait. Mm-hmm. And as he listens, the the million Godzilla, tiny Godzillas will eat everybody else, mm-hmm. <laughs> and then they'll leave, and mm-hmm. then because they'll have to keep eating like a shark, and then he can maybe come out later after a few years to a blighted say, like, world, to a blighted world, and then say like, I guess I'm still here, and yeah. then and and uh- like just as he's a uh, like he he's having this like moment of amazing triumph, he'll drop his talk boy and it'll break and he'll be like no not now <laughs> yeah now <laughs> i tr- now i truly am home alone <laughs> he'll say <laughs> and he has to repopulate the earth with buzz's girlfriend <laughs> Woof. Woof. yeah it could be the sequel to home alone 2 lost in new york and it'd be home alone 3 new york is lost <laughs> And, and, and the, for that joke to work, you have to do what I do, which is pretend that uh, Home Alone, anything after Home Alone 2 doesn't exist. So. Yes. Um, should we wrap up? Yeah, let's, let's finish this delightful. They should have made, they should have made, they need to make a new Home Alone 2 now, but combine Home Alone and like the White House Down movies, 
but oh, like as Kevin trying to protect the White House from like international terrorists and he's trying to save the president. Fuck, I would watch that. Why well, isn't that get, real? They could get Charlie Hunnam. I would buy that actually if it was like Home Alone six, uh, and it's Charlie Hunnam is a grown up Kevin McAllister trying to save the president with traps. Uh, don't mind if I do enjoy that film. Thank you very much. Right? Ah, uh, is it too late? Can we make that Hollywood? Yo, Hollywood. Make me that, please. Can please Daniel Stern that. and Joe Pesci be the terrorist leaders, I guess? Yes. Yeah, yes, they sure. can. Yeah, they are in there. They're in the mix. I, I think Daniel Stern would be in. I think, he would, I think he'd sign on. Pesci might be a bigger get. Oh, no, no, no. Pesci and Stern are the two that, like, Kevin, like, has to turn to, like, oh, to oh, work yes, with. The team oh, off. fuck yes. Are you kidding me? Are you? Fu- I'm. I'm fucking so in love with this movie. They're okay. like el- elderly, and mm-hmm. he has to go to them and be like, "One more job." One more I guess to break into the White House together as a team up. Are you kidding? We're not gonna help you, kid. We're gonna kill you, guys. It's ISIS. Mm, okay. Okay. <laughs> Listen, you I got- may be a dirty crook, but I'm. I'm a red blooded American through and through. <laughs> Let's do this. The patriotic Let's, bandits right again. The patriotic bandits this time. And we got a third member and it's Kevin. And then at the end, uh, they do try to kill him, but they can't because he's Kevin McAllister and he had traps ready for them. Yeah. Oh, Fuck, he was looking good. for that double cross. Fuck yes. Oh, make oh. it. We need this now more than ever. Shit. Oh. I want this movie. I want this movie. Oh, I want this movie. Six. What's what's Brenda Fricker going to do? <laughs> oh, she time- teams up with Snow Shovel Man. They're working oh. together. Snow Holy Shovel shit, Man is they there fused. with Brenda Fricker at the they last f- minute. <laughs> they fused into one magic old person. <laughs> <laughs> this seems kind of gross at first, but then they turn out to be completely normal and nice. Fuck yeah. Shit. <laughs> and then Brenda Fricker turns into doves. She just turns into pigeons. And yeah, she just- it turns into like a John Woo movie with Brenda Fricker like throwing doves at them. Long dead dubs. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Shit. Okay. Shit. So anyway. Good movie. Good movie. It's a good movie that um, exists now. I mean, we've basically spoken it into existence. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Thank you to everyone who has kicked in gifts to the Mabim Bam Angels campaign for the year. You all are doing an amazing job. If you don't know, here's like the very, very brief version Um We are trying to help out people in our area who aren't going to have much of a holiday without you, our beloved listeners. Um, There's a list of people at mabimbamangels.com that you can choose one You uh, and you send them things. You can do Amazon. Just send gifts to help and you claim them off the list and and you feel great and you help people who really need it. Um, And uh, you all rise to the challenge every year. And this year was our biggest list ever it felt like by a country mile and everybody's just like crushing it what i love is i I, and a lot of people know about this we've been doing it for a while but i don't know if everybody knows the backstory and that this was a thing that like the newspaper used to do and then like and they still uh, help they still and they they still help yeah definitely but like our audience just ate it up our audience was like you know this is ours like a million pug-sized godzillas yeah it just consumed it like a million godzilla-sized kevin arnold's I, uh, <laughs> Wait, hold on, buy, not, kevin, not arnold. kevin arnold that's another one isn't it i can buy uh, you can buy gifts on there or you can just kick in some cash if you if you want to do that because they're trying to buy big ticket items like people don't have beds and ovens and it's uh, it's really depressing until you decide that you can fix it and uh uh you can you can fix this go to mabimbamangels.com uh, and let's get those final 15% done. Yeah. Uh, I, I was going to say right now, uh, we are also participating in World Builders, which is a charity that, uh, was started by Patrick Rothfuss. Um, it benefits Heifer International, Mercy Corps, and First Book. Um, you know, helping people out. And, uh, we're, I think we're this week, I think is the end of it. I'm not sure. But, um, right now we've already raised over $1,500, uh, through the Mabim Bambinos World Builders Group. Um, and for every $10 you donate, you get entered into a lottery to win cool stuff and you get to be a part of the Mabim Bambino team. So if you want to go to bit.ly forward slash MBMBAMWB, you can check that out. Um, we're also participating in some live streams with Patrick this week. Not sure what time this will go up, but if it goes up in time, 
Uh, we're doing one at 2 p.m. Eastern, uh, and we'll tweet about that. And then I'm also doing one on Wednesday uh, at 5 p.m. Eastern, talking about like mental health and how important it is to take care of yourself, and we'll tweet that link as well. Um, and yeah, go check it out. Support a good cause. Uh, I want to thank John Roderick and the Long Winters for the use of our theme song. It's a departure off the album, Putting the Days to Bed. It is a wonderful, wonderful album and a great uh, holiday time present uh, for a loved one or for yourself. It's really good. Um, uh, I guarantee you're going to love it. Also want to thank Maximum Fun for having us. You can go to MaximumFun.org and just start clicking on shows and listening to them, like the Beef and Dairy Network and Jordan Jesse Go and Throwing Shade and One Bad Mother. There's a ton of good shows that you can find all in there. If you want to find other stuff that we do, you can go to McElroyShows.com and find all of the various podcasts and video series and all of our Twitters and addresses and all kinds of fun stuff uh, all there. We are going to be doing a Candle Nights uh, uh, episode here in a couple weeks or so. Uh, so please get in your Candle Nights themed questions. Um, oh, yeah. Griffin, you mentioned uh, gifts. We haven't mentioned in a while. MaxFunStore.com mm. has has merch from all kinds of different Max Fun shows, including my brother, my brother and me. I think there's probably still time to get stuff ordered and get it in time for Christmas. Uh, but if not, you can always hand them a piece of paper that says, I owe you one T-shirt. Um, but go check out MaxFunStore.com, and there's lots of cool shit there. You said Max Fun. That reminded me I was on another Maximum Fun podcast called Still Buffering this week to talk about video games. Mm. Uh, and it was a lot of fun. And you can find that wherever fine podcasts are sold. Still Buffering. It's a, it's a good show about being a teen. Uh, that anybody can enjoy. That's it for the episode. Final Yahoo. Y'all want it? Yeah. Yes. Some riding high. Zoe Kinski, thank you, Zoe. It's Yahoo Answers user. Sorry, something's gone wrong. This website fucking sucks. Uh, <laughs> let's say their name is Jason. Jason with a Z asks, I heard that if you get a Taco Bell tattoo, they will give you fee food for life. Is this true? <laughs> <laughs> my name's Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. This has been my brother, my brother, me. Kiss your dad. Square on the lips. Comedy, friendship, and creativity. All of this and more wait for you at Max FunCon. Join us for Max FunCon in Lake Arrowhead next June or Max FunCon East in the Poconos next September. Tickets for both events are on sale now, but they're going fast. Visit MaxFunCon.com to buy your tickets right now. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported.